Welcome to the final Ninja Tune podcast for 2017, and we're delighted to welcome Jordan Rakai, whose album Wallflower is out now on Ninja Tune, talking with Lol Karna, who released his album Yesterday's Gone earlier this year. They discuss how they connected through Tom Mish, their first forays into making music, meeting their idols, and their shared love of hip hop, playing some of their favourite tunes along the way. After that, we check out some of the new releases coming out on the Ninja Tune family of labels with music from Nabia Iqbal, Young Fathers, Visionist, The Bug and Romare. Thanks as always for listening and a big shout out to all our guests in 2017. Don't forget, please rate and review the Ninja Tune podcast if you're listening in iTunes and we'll be back in 2018 on a monthly basis. Snake, I'll try some wizardry patiently Hate towards my imagery vacancy. You are the source I might just jump on this for free, jumping on them freestyles. I be wild, moving brain seed now. It's so sunset, it's beautiful, it's one guest. One morning, afternoon in that sundress. The summer flies by every morning. I'm still yawning. Same conversation, never boring. Yo, she texted me. Oh, that's Tom. Oh, for fuck's sake. I know oh. that these days are feeling cold. My love could take her home As if we never knew I was too young for you Yeah, what's up? Hello, what's up, Loyal? How you doing? I'm good, it's Lord Connor and Jordan Lord Connor. Jordan Ricard, J Rax So for those of us, including myself, who don't know you Tell us a bit about your music and your... Yeah, man uh, that's Character It's hip-hop uh, yeah, and I make hip hop from South London. Very good at um, football. Very good at walking dogs <laughs> and making pasta. That's my my stuff. But pasta from scratch. What about you, J Rex? Um, I'm a musician mm. living in London. Nice. I'm very good at uh, virtual football, FIFA. I'm and I'm really good. At the, I'm really good at the Rubik's cube. Are you actually? Yeah, man. What Rubik's cube PB was um, 38 seconds. <laughs> No way. Straight up, man. I, I could. Um, I used to do that when I was sixteen, like four hours a day. Yeah. Um, you know, when you play someone online in FIFA, there's yeah. sort of like that minute waiting each game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I just quickly go to Rubik's Cube. Yeah, man. So that's my musical history. That's my musical history. Rubik's Cube and FIFA. I, reckon, I still need to play at FIFA. Actually. I can't believe you haven't done that yet. So Barney's been talking a lot of smack about that because apparently Alpha Mist as well. Shout out to Alpha Mist. He is good at FIFA also. Barney's not. But Barney's. I think Barney's beat me once, and that sign that should never have happened. Yeah. I was tired. I think that's how Loyal and I met, Loyal kind of also known as Ben. That's how we met uh, two years ago, probably. We, I have a collective called um, Are We Live, which is like Tomish, Barney, and Alpha are in. And Loyal is um, the fifth wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not, <laughs> like an honorary member that doesn't, not really part of it, but I am part of it. I've and got Tom connected group. us, and uh, we've known each other ever since. I pretty much met you when I moved to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember hearing about you because you were coming to London. Because I did, had you already. You, you already kind of hooked up with Tom on over like yeah. over the interweb. Yeah, we were on yeah. the same yeah, album. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then um, he was like, I was at his house one time, and he was just like, Yeah, yeah, working with these new people, so and so, so and so. And he played me your stuff and stuff that you kind of would think about doing together. And I was like, oh, This is sick. And then yeah, you came came over and then kind of just made your way into um, some your circle and kicked yeah, you so, out. Yeah, yeah. Basically, basically took my place with more talent. <laughs> nah. You're like, Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, I play fever as well, but I also play instruments. And I was like, Yeah, great, <laughs> sick. <laughs> Gentlemen, knowing all we are a miskin screw. Let the freedom melt my gentle skin to a portion of my broken view. Take it as it is a simple plan. Knowing all we are a miskin Oh, yeah, yeah. 
crazy to think that I've only came here like three years ago now. Yeah. Why did you Why did you come here? What's the reason? I came here to not for music actually. Music was like the second yeah uh, reason I came here just to like I don't know get out of my little bubble in Brisbane, mm -hmm. living with my mum, yep. which is fine. Yeah, it's, it's uh, thanks, uh, <laughs> No, but living with my mum, it's it, it just in Brisbane, man. And my brothers had moved out. I was sort of just making beats every day, playing basketball, and like there was no. I'm always up for like pushing myself. So I moved to London, met Barney. Yeah. He introduced me to Alpha, and then it's sort of been like. Oh, that's crazy! So you met Barney. So you met must have met Barney through Tom, or you met. No, well, Barney. I posted like a status on Twitter saying yeah. like I'm coming to London in three days. Would love yeah. to meet every muser I can. Oh, my days. And Barney was obviously the guy. Got Barney touch, emailed huh? me. Um, he said, "What's up, man? Not sure if you know me. Here's my, mu <laughs> here's my, mu here's my music." Um, and then he was like, "I'd love to take you out for Japanese." <laughs> But this is the thing, for people who, who don't know Barney Artist, you haven't met Barney Artist or know about his music, Barney Artist is one of those guys who will just force you to be his friend. I never wanted to be, <laughs> I never ever wanted to be Barney's friend. And he'll listen to this, he'll know that. I spoke to him about it, like today I spoke to him about it. <laughs> but he just, like, he just, he's always there to the point where it's like, well, you know, you're going out for dinner before a show or something and Barney's just at the show early for some reason. So you're like, oh, do you want to come for food? And it's like, yeah, cool, whatever. Then he might give you a lift home or something. Before you know it, you're just friends with him. <laughs> and he's infiltrated. He took me to a uh, Korean restaurant. And he was like, yeah, man, this is the sickest place in Shoreditch, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the whole menu was meat. And at that stage, I was vegan. And Alpha yeah. was there as well. Alpha's yeah. a big meat eater. I was like, oh, guys, sorry, I'm vegan. So we ended up going to Wagamama's. Nice. Uh, and a friendship was formed. How can I find a reason to love you when I don't love myself? her who put the flame out in that scarcely room caught it dressed for the occasion yet not filled with glee his hands reaching for the curtain she was quick to put the light out in that scarcely room so you got one album do you have any eps um i got one ep ep called a little late which i released um i was at i was at uni um, Central St. Martins in King's Cross and I was there for a year and I linked up with Rebel Clef, oh, yeah. my DJ. Um, was just, At uni? No, 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 I linked up with him just before. So I was, it was just, I was, we were kind of put together for a friend, like Match.com. Like my friend was like, <laughs> probably like for, 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 for rap, he was, he was making beats with no raps and I was making raps with no beats. And so we went to this party and my friend was like, yo, yo, this is the guy I was telling you about. And so we just started talking, hit it off kind of, actually like, it was quite romantic, but not romantic. It was like a proper bromance. Did you guys, I mean, did you guys have to work I was trying to say, did you have to work your way into like digging each other's music or was it instant? No, 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 literally it was instant because all the stuff he was talking about, I was I was up on and all the stuff that I wasn't up on was stuff that I, I I was interested. It was kind of all in the same vein. So I was like, oh, I really like this guy. And he go, oh, if you like this guy, then check out this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And then I go home and do my homework and come back and be like, yo, that was sick. But like the first day we hung out, we made a tune. And then uh, every time, because I was at uni so much, I was there Monday to Saturday, mm. nine till nine. Um, so I had no no free time. So Sunday was like my music day, and so over the course of like two three months, we started making this tape, and then um, yeah, I was at it was like summer holidays. We got off of this one tour, and um, the nice one. No, it was this is way before it was like it was Atmosphere a rapper called Atmosphere. It's like two guys, um, 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 and they yeah they were touring. I was supposed to go back to uni, but I'd have I had some stuff that was changing at home. Like my pops passed away, and so I needed to make some cash, and so I was like, let's just do the tour, and I'll drop out of uni. And that's it. That's been that, that, that was literally it. We were like, oh, because but it was like a two week tour. Yeah. And there was nothing planned after that. So we're like, well, let's put this tape out after we do this tour and hope for the best. That was literally Is it. Is this pre meeting Tom? Yeah. 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 I didn't know Tom at this point. So at this stage, he had produced, oh, he produced that whole EP. Everything except for one tune. The tune was produced by this guy called Alex Bury, who lived like five minutes from my house. And he went to the same school as me. So we were working on stuff. He's a really, really talented guy, man. 
Uh, a lot of laughs don't start when the cuddle parts The hearts break and part take through a double dance I was under charm, trusting in that armor hurt Last prefers it, I stumble through the trouble chance So ask me and ask this instead of prying Denying, lagging, definitely something I keep my pride in I'm spying through keyholes and more So when seashells we saw for a necklace Till they're dragging on the floor, it's raw Raw, rotten to the core The Granny Smith sitting back in sniffs Till she's banging on the door, let me in I promised I'll be better by the sunlight You would me a cup of tea, I'm cured, I'm the one, right? I turned my back and pressed it flat into the oak We spoke, arguing about the ways I couldn't cope From the lies to the smoke to the lines of the coke That were buried in the very thing my mind would have known I couldn't do it, knew the truest soul, let the foolish roll Unlocking the door, I was thinking, should I do this though? No, wait, yes, forget the stress Opened up my fucking arms and pressed the breast to my chest I was at um, a college called the Brit School oh, yeah. um, But I was studying drama but only because I, yeah, I don't know if I was, I was heavily interested in stuff like, like Shakespeare and whatnot but I wasn't trying to be I, 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 don't know, I didn't really have much responsibility so I was just kind of doing whatever I didn't yeah. need to make there was no necessity to make not not make money but you know yeah. just to just kind of keep myself afloat because my mum and dad were keeping each other afloat and then the house afloat but yeah when my pops passed I was like yeah I kind of then had to step into the thing of going I can't be at uni spending £9,000 a year plus my loan I need yeah. to be making making, making that back and giving it to my mum for the rent. I wanted to be a rapper and a footballer. Those are my two. Well, and then realistically, I wanted to be a, a chef. And then, so when I dropped out of uni, my plan was to do this one tour and then get a job in the kitchen and then just yeah, give them on the rent and kind of work out of that and kind of figure that out. That was, that's where I was at and make music for fun. But it just it's kind of didn't snowball because it's taken ages in a, in a good way. But it was something that, yeah, I wasn't really planning on it happening. Trust, told them I get like them damn like it. So keep your mouth closed shut. Eyes wide open when that doubt rolls up Cause if the drought shows nothing but the clowns Hold nothing but the sound I'll be running till the ground no up Cause the best don't change Clinging to that cold one My mother said there's no love until you show some So I showed love and got nothing now there's no one You wonder why I couldn't keep in tow son I wonder why my dad didn't want me Ex didn't need me Half of them left and the rest finna breeze me Gets blessed till I second guess Rest till it frees me There's nothing to believe in Believe me started playing shows we kind of made a lot of the I know we hadn't made a lot of the album that's a lie we made like the, the first EP was all made before we, we played shows and so that was a lot slower not slower but a little bit a lot more kind of um, yeah yeah, con- well, yeah not, but it's all been conscious I guess it was just a bit more like melon, melancholic which yeah. the second one is but uh, it was. A, I guess it's just it was about once you play shows you understand okay maybe we should have one here that's a bit upbeat or one this or one that but when those things started popping up it wasn't oh I want to make a tune for the show so that people can get their hands in there and go crazy it was always still let's make a tune and see what comes out so when, when the, if the beat because it's half the battle if the beat's knocking then that's kind of what people are going to latch onto first yeah, the chorus is okay but it was always still never with any verse if I ever wanted to go this one doesn't matter do you know what I mean so I'm yeah, just, yeah. This, this can just be about anything just to flex my muscles it always had to be about pushing some sort of story because I can't otherwise I can't write I start trying to like because Rebel Cliff he can write like I don't know, he can write like like ludicrous, do you know what I mean? In the sense where it's just like, not, because he, he's one of my favourites, like taboo, do you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. he doesn't really all the time rap about much, but he can get you amped up. That's how Chris can rap sometimes, because he doesn't have to always be telling the truth or saying something that's like a coherent story. He can just put words together that sound nice, and you know, there's punchlines in there that can get you excited. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a separate kind of rap. Because it's a rap, he brings the pads to the lab. The lab is my pad, we're using every session to jam. Working on our revolutionary revenue plan. But currently without the green, like a recession in Dan. And so we scribbled on the daily, making beats from Pretty ancient plastic, it's the greatness that your parents used to play with. Quick and very painless. Stumbled onto rap, always been sick, but very aimless. Now I'm quick to leave you brainless. You anus, you ignoramus. Just let me say this, not the greatest. But give me space, kid, I'm set to make. So basically we're bringing it back to basics Rocking high hats and big kicks that are the latest Trend is a statement But when you put this fashion aside This rap music is a passion of mine Life in line cause I designed it in this rhyme Chilling time keeps ticking but I'm high Keep spitting and flipping rhythms to ride like My cousin, my big cousin who's at, I call him my uncle cause he's like 45 And it's weird to have a cousin who's that old yeah. But it just, it just makes it sound like I've got a weird family But he, um, he was in a rap group 
years like years and years ago called Lords of Rap, and they there's like one um, one like seven inch of them. They've got a single on one side, on the other side is London Posse, which is like the the pinnacle of you know like UK rappers who started rapping in their own accent. Because at first, obviously, a lot of it was if you were rapping from the UK, you were rapping in an American accent. Um, and they were one of the first, they're not necessarily the first, but they're one of the first kind of groups to do that. But you know, my uncle was in one the other one. So when he used to pick me up from school and I was at primary school, so I'd have been like six or seven, he was busting me on to that kind of stuff. Oh, like right. Fire Life Cypher, who kind of, some, some of them had like a bit of an American twang, some of them didn't. And then you got like London Posse, such a his group and whatnot. But I did, I, I kind of grew up on that because that's when, when Grime was coming up. Yeah. But when I was first listening to Grime, Grime wasn't, Grime was Grime, but Grime for me was just rappers. It was like, these are just guys rapping from the UK and I was I kind of I kind of saw it under the same umbrella as I saw hip hop I was like oh, I that guy's writing raps that guy's writing raps these ones are quicker these ones are slower this one's got an American accent this one's got a UK accent but because on, on Channel U it was like this TV programme um, on Sky in the UK it was like a UK hip hop UK uh, like an urban yeah, yeah, yeah. programme but it had like guys like Skinny Man and Jest and Black Twang and whatnot right next to Getz and Skepta um, and so there was no difference between them yeah. if you're watching them all one after the other but then as as it went away and it came back it then kind of defined itself as its own thing and kind of didn't want to be part of hip hop from the UK because mm. hip hop from the UK was n never got any time of day yeah really you know it, it, other than Roots Maneuver skinny man a little bit shout out to Roots Maneuver who's your favourite rapper of all time impossible man I mean I was talking to my missus about this the other day and we got like and, and Rebel Clef earlier on and there's, there's three different categories there's, there's your there's the best rappers of all time and and I would I would I'd there's a difficult to do a top five or a top ten, but off the top right now I'd say Black Thought is always in there from the roots. Most F is always in there, Common is always in there. And then the other two are kinda of up for grabs and whoever I'm feeling at, at the time. Alright, come what um what tunes you got? I know you got tunes. I'm gonna yeah? play a Kiwi. Oh, nice, is... nice. What are we going to fire traffic jam going no See the rain has made a space for us to play some mind Inside the sound of winter oh, I hear it on my window pane Calling out my name So that tune was uh, Big BW, Fat Freddy's Drop. Did I jack his flow too hard? Um, no, you didn't. You didn't. But it's nice to hear. It's nice to hear influence though. It's just talking, it's talking off mic about uh, sorry, <laughs> talking off air about no about um, uh, Eminem and um, Master Ace, uh, Rebel Clef, DJ Rebel Clef, my DJ, my mate, put me onto him um, and put me onto the sorry the the the, the link between them because apparently it's one of Eminem's biggest biggest influences and you can really hear it in that but I think it's refreshing to hear you know like can, is it is it does it sound like current Eminem or is it early Eminem it's kind of early Eminem it's just it's, the, it's kind of just the, just the way he puts his flow together because his flow's quite chopped up and it sounds a little bit unorthodox but that's how Master Ace kind of is wrapped in it. it was also I guess the storytelling element perhaps yeah because Master Ace's um, albums he kind of a lot of his albums he puts together as stories and they're, they're coherent but then you can also take out the singles and listen to them on their own yeah, or any yeah. tune but then you put them together it's a whole story and I think it's wicked because obviously you know Eminem is one of the this is the, oh sorry Eminem's back by yeah, the way yeah Eminem but he's got this new tune out yeah yeah I, have, I haven't heard it I haven't heard Barney it Barney said he's not sure but I want to hear it because I reckon a, but what is Barney now do you know what I mean so I want to check it out we'll give it a true give it a true response Marshall Mathers man or Mathers sorry I don't, know, I don't know if he goes I don't know if he goes top 
Um, if we is he in your top five? Top five. Because you no. didn't say the other two. Yeah, no, the other two. Other two. One of them is Andre Three Thousand. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the last, oh, and then the God. last spot is up for grabs. Like, I don't know, man. A lot of people would say Jay Z is up there, but I don't like. He's there, but he's not up there. He's like in the top ten. Nas, I reckon, probably takes the last spot for what he did. It's so hard because. But if you were to do missing. it by the performances in their best albums, yeah, 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 yeah. then Nas, yeah, yeah, it's true. Nas would um absolutely. But then, but, but like, I feel the like the got... stuff like Jay Z and Nas have yeah. done in the last yeah. five years. Yeah, hasn't had blood, but it's still, but but to be that, but still be culturally relevant over what Jay Z's like fifty two or something. Is he? Me. Yeah, and the guys just put another album. Do you know what I mean? And people still know about Jay Z. Like Jay Z's been been popping since before my brother was born. Do you know what I'm saying it's, it's it, but my brother's grown up the whole time he's been living. He's just only known about Jay Z. Yeah. But, then, but if you think that that's why the top five dead alive doesn't work because then you're missing out on yeah, loads exactly. of people. Um, I don't know five, uh, Big L. Uh, who else? These are honourable mentions. Yeah, yeah these, these are honourable mentions. Five, 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 and Big L are honourable mentions and are very important. But Biggie Smalls also man is honourable yeah, mentions. It's too taboo to say. I don't know why it is, but it isn't because he's one of the best rappers of all time yeah I was definitely definitely East, East Coast as well I don't, worry, I don't ever worry about my next step uh, I don't ever even worry about my next check like it's the best bet try getting a protect neck living in this hurry only worry is my next breath cause you can get left and ghost with the rest and then the most raise a toast to the death like it's blessed but the second guess pokes through your chest till you rest where your bread is left wishing you were next but the best don't fade flicker where the flame blows uh, the circle still be tighter than some cane Rose. I feel the pain, never worry if the pain shows Maybe the only reason I'll be feeling like I'm paint those images that fit Quick like the minute that you flip For your finish, feel the ignorance and dip Still you slip for a minute, blame the Guinness that you sip Little piss, missing ignorance and bliss Shit. No worries, so don't worry I know it's all about the money It's so crazy because I my whole history of uh, making music was I used to be a hip hop producer. Yeah. Okay. Make, okay. Making okay. music. What, producing for for the Kiwi rap. For for like my mates in high school. Sick. The and I was making rappers. beats on my MPC, and we were like, my favorite rappers. What MPCs? Yeah. Twenty five hundred. Or two thousand five hundred, as they say in the UK. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, man, I was making like, well, beat makers that I loved were like Pete Rock and Q Tip. Yeah. That's why I feel uh, like. See, that's what I mean. I feel like even though he might not be Tip. lyrically Tip. the king, oh, like, yeah. he's not on par with Nas. No, no, but no, but, but I feel like yeah. him as a yeah. as a, his vibe as a rapper yeah. is also yeah. part of it. Because I feel like the way you judge a rapper is like yeah. the lyrics, obviously. Understanding of the space that they put their yeah, 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 and the mood, yeah. and then also yeah. the uh, their their performance yeah, of their yeah, voice. Yeah, the vibe, but like I, there's a big thing I was saying to Chris because there's a uh, Rebel Clef sorry I'm gonna call him Chris because that's what I call him he keeps asking me to call him Rebel Clef on, on the important things so people know who he is <laughs> but um, he um, we were talking about producers because I think I think Rebel Clef Chris is one of the best rappers I know and it's because he is a producer but like all loads of the best rappers are, like Jay Dilla sick rapper and not necessarily like like lyrically dense and like you know but understanding where to put first of all how to make a beat where there's space that you can rap on and then the space that is needed for the beat to breathe while you put your lyrics on it mm. and flow wise but like him Kev Brown Q-Tip even Pete Rock's got flows do you know what I mean he's got like, like what's his name um, oh the dude from um, Mob D who didn't pass away Havoc because mm. obviously rest in peace prodigy big loss but but Havoc from Mob Deep is the other guy producer raps as well and these are all wicked rappers and I think that the reason they're so good Odyssey because they produce Kanye West Kanye West um, Black Milk oh Black Milk's sick but there you J. go J. Cole I mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah there you go but that, exactly, that's exactly my point but anyways this will end up being yeah, <laughs> they all produce yeah, their own yeah, beats they, they all, all produce their own beats to make a tune actually I'll tell you I'll play as a tune I wasn't going to play it but I'll play it now because I just spoke about it Black Milk a song called um, uh, Sunday's Sunday's best, Monday's worst, but I'll just play you Sunday's best. Yeah, yeah, AM, rise in the AM, early morning lay in. I just wanna stay in, I just wanna lay in. Pops like, get your ass up, stop the faking. We already late in. Sunday morning waking, faking like my stomach's aching. Mom pull out clothes, this is Sunday's best occasion. Bow tie, no lie, church shoes was aching. 80 degree weather in the blazer, body blazing. Already can't wait until this day in. Just a little nigga that would rather be home video gaming. Now we on our way in. Dick is speaking, preacher, preaching to that congregation. Mason. 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 Mason.
wondering off not hearing that man of the cloth talk about that man on the cross now we back to praying old ladies with church fans screaming out amen looking at that painting on the stained glass watching why that collection plate pass Ties offering to me is all the same cash Fast forward, got older A youngin' that gone bad Let me rephrase that A youngin' that went down that wrong path Duh. No matter how religious moms and pops was Still had encounters with the cops some That was uh, Sunday's Best by um, Black Milk But yeah, Black Milk is interesting Rebel Cliff went to see him And that was he, That was the guy who put him on to making beats So I have to thank Black Milk Because otherwise I wouldn't have had my early beats at all. It's crazy to think uh, we all have our own, to know, we all have our own influence into, let's say me and Rebel Clef. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but my hip hop beats were so, are so different. Yeah, what were you and, inspired by? Um, in those days, I was inspired by mainly Tribe. Sick. Tribe and Pharrell. Sick, sick, sick. So they sort of like, or Neptune, sorry. Yeah, Neptune's are making crazy. Um, because Pharrell was playing all these parts yeah, on yeah. his little piano, yeah, 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 and then the yeah. the like the dusty drums and stuff. But Q-Tip, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it is a genius? Because he like, man, I didn't know too much about Q-Tip being a producer at first. I didn't know that he was like. Obviously, the Uma is the thing. Is like the, supposed to be the collective that's like was like Jay Diller and Q-Tip and someone else coming with us as part of it. I think Maceo was like part of it as well mm. from De La Soul. But they were like kind of all working on beats together. So yeah, you know, a lot of the beats you're hearing have like all been tweaked by each other. Some of them are just, you know, ones that are just Diller beats and they've kind of been put under the same umbrella. But in the most part, these producers are all just like bouncing off each other. Yeah. Ridiculous. But yeah, Tip, man. It, yeah, yo. He's the king. I'm gonna, yeah. play, I'm gonna play a song by Q-Tip. Yeah. Um, this is, this just shows, this is a solo project. It just shows like how ridiculous his mind is. He's mm. rapping on, he's made the beat. Um, and Watch it. it's called Man Woman Boogie. Ooh. Get out. Make it easy, good guy. Make it easy, good guy. Make it easy, you now. Get out. Man and woman, get down. Good guy, make it easy. Good guy, make it easy, you now. Get out. Man and woman, get down. Man and woman be patrolling the earth. Putting shit in the game. Citizens. Of the world, we running now. Precious time is a grain of sand. Ignore it by the hand. Work hard, man, every Work day. Hard, man, every day oh, for another man's plan. Man orders woman when he come home. Get your ass in the air. My woman wants to just as much as Woman I wants to just as much as he does. But makes him think she don't care. Man and woman in the same where I'm from. We have a these in the mind. Minimum wage in the internet page. Crime. Protect themselves from crime. The blue is color on the brown is the skin White, yellow, red too They don't care Who it is They watching you Conspiracy so you might as well dance Getting down Zulu Man, woman, yo, you might as well dance Getting down Zulu Come on, come on Get down That tune was called Man Woman Boogie, Boogie. by Q Tip. Boogie. Boogie. Boogie, baby, Boogie. Q Tip's the number one for me. I know we've been talking about our favorite rappers, but um, who's your favorite singer of all time? Favorite singer of all time. Did Just, you just. Justin. What? Justin Timberlake. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I do love Justin. Baby. True, true, guilty pleasure. Not Justin Bieber. So, okay, this is a, this is a crucial question. Yeah, then. yeah. Um, of those two Justin Timberlake albums, I'm sure you know the question about to ask, but what is. Your favorite out of Justified and um, my future, whatever. I can't. I can't even. I can't even do that. What well, all I can do is tell you that the one song that puts me. I mean, like, like Justified. I. I don't know. Fuck it. All I can say is that whenever Senorita comes on, <laughs> that is, that is like that's a moment in time. <laughs> Senorita. Wait, was, what, what, what Which was is it? also Pharrell, Neptune's. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I, I think that I think that's the best album as well. Yeah, yeah. Because there's man, there's something about 
I know there's obviously like there's something about for uh, the production on it, but there was something about it because it, it hadn't really felt like it had been done before those two things coming together. Yeah. Because that's still, to me, that was like coming from a hip hop world. Do you yeah. I mean? But also it had nothing to do with it because the guy was from Disney Channel and was in NSYNC. <laughs> so they, they, those, those two worlds do not meet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they should have yeah. been, but like there was, there was nobody, nobody from any part, any like nitty gritty part of like Brooklyn or there was no person from the shittest place in South London that didn't hear it and go, oh my days, what is this? What is yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. It's wicked. Um, but yeah, favourite singer, I couldn't, um, I really like um, Chet Baker, mm. um, a big fan of Chet Baker. Um, i tell you who on it, yeah, Chet Baker, man, in, 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 in more recent times, I really like the guy, um, the two the two features on the new Bad Bad Not Good album, the singers, the, uh, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte Day Wilson. Charlotte Day Wilson. Woo. I emailed her, she never got back to me. Oi. Shout outs. Shout out to Charlotte Day Wilson. I'll, I'll DM her because she follows me on Twitter. Does she? No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sent, her, I sent her such a long email. I was like, yo, man, this is a rap from South London. Uh, I'm she's I, insane, I did, She's so talented. She's but, like, amazing. All, all, like, all I was doing was literally was just sending her props. I was like, yo, massive props. I think your voice is beautiful. If you're ever in London and want to make a tune with someone who's not that popping, shout me. But yeah, um, and, and the dude from um, uh, Future Islands, I'd never checked for Future Islands at all. I didn't know any of, the, any of their stuff and I heard him on the tune. Um, what's his name? Uh, I'm not sure if I actually know. Uh, I'll play it to you. Yeah, let's How play about it. that? Let's play it. Look at that. I found you at the window again. Looking out, watching the leaves falling in. Then you were something like a dream. Time Moves Slow by Bad Bad Not Good featuring Sam Herring. I'm actually gonna go see Bad Bad Not Good tonight um, and I've got my fingers crossed that he's there. Oh, actually, they, they, it was mad to me, man, because I'm a big, big fan of Bad Bad Not Good. I think they're good, bad. Bad Bad. <laughs> I, saw them, like, I heard them uh, a couple years back playing with Tyler, the creator. Is that yeah. how you heard them? Tyler, the creator. Um, I, I saw him playing a jam session. It's like these guys from Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they, they're Canadian. Yeah. That's why they're so cool, man. Yeah, man. That's why they're so cool because Canadians are so much. Not cool. a diss to the Americans. Yeah, not a diss, but we love you. Lot know how it is, man. Um, Part of the Commonwealth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> but but yeah, no. They um, what's their set? Um, but one of the dudes, dude Alex, um, um the drummer, I've, I've met a couple times, man. Um, and he's a really, really, really blessed guy. But he was watching a bit of my set. And so I went to kind of dance him up afterwards, but I was so drunk and by the point it was at Pitchfork Paris. So I was like, yo, yo, man, yo, big fan, big fan. Um, must have made a big fool of myself. So fingers crossed. So feature on the way then. Yes, yeah, features, yeah, features <laughs> couldn't be further away, man. The heat of the storm warm these lies. Oh these lies. Oh these lies. to the soul grip it tight oh so tight sit me high into the darkness the rules of the gift are trapped within the maze hopelessly I'm desperate, see me high. 
I'm a big fan of a lot of people um, that, are, that, are, that are current right now. Like, I don't listen to too much current music, but then my little brother passed me his uncle, my missus, my, my mum, and it kind of filters down to me. Yeah. And if I hear it, and I really enjoy it, like Sam from a massive fan of. Yeah, yeah. But I always feel like trying to court a, a musician, not trying to court a musician, oh, but, like, but like, yo, like when, when you meet someone that you're a big fan of, and you're kind of hoping maybe one day you can work in a studio or something, I get like, it's, it's like meeting a girl that I fancy, and having to, like, and, and trying to like, yeah, trying to try and take them on a date. Like, is it, and then trying to like, oh, do I text them? And then I've texted them once and they yeah. replied and are they just busy or should I text them again? <laughs> yeah. no, I get it with everyone. <laughs> it's so bad. Man, I had this um, experience. I played with Tom Mish at Citadel Festival mm. two years ago, I think it was, or a year ago, last summer. And um, I played, I got up on set with uh, with Tom yeah. and did my song, Wake Up This Day with him. Yeah. And Big one song. of my favorite singers right now from Australia this guy called Matt Corby yeah I know Matt Corby was there cool. and he was supposedly like watching the set from the back yeah. going this song's sick yeah, obviously yeah, that's yeah, what he's yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 you could have just figured I'm so tired I can't uh, be bothered to move <laughs> uh, <laughs> god anyway, this guy's I awful I heard he was there I get off the stage and like um, I heard he sort of backstage like introing yeah, yeah. himself to Tom and yeah. I literally gap it because I'm too I got star I get starstruck yeah. and he's the only sort of guy I get starstruck because yeah. he's the king in my eyes yeah. Did like, you singing him? no I didn't I literally ran away Fuck's sake. I ran away yeah but that, but this is what I'm saying is that and also okay, that's actually better because I don't I do the same thing but then this one time bad bad not good I was drunk enough to go oh this would be cool and I yeah. just rolled in and was like yo guys guys knowing only knowing one of them and did like the proper oh, like, yeah. the proper like um, the Hong Kong bow. <laughs> The Shaolin, oh, the Shaolin bow. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Oh, oh yo, big absolute pleasure to be here, man. But I was like, definitely slow my words. It's tough to um, it's tough to get that that feature thing, because a lot of people work yeah. interwebs. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. work like. But that's the thing. It's just, but fuck that. I think you can't even. Uh, that's the way I look at it. It's just like you can't even go to it in the sense of feature. Like the features are really that are kind of possible in my eyes. It's like Tom, you, Alpha, uh, Rebel Cliff, the people I see on a day to day. Do you know what I mean I like? Yeah. Because it just. Because to be to work with someone that you don't know, I think it's it's nice. It's, a bit to, just, yeah, it's just nice to be able to go, hey, I'm a big fan. But that's, I think that's the thing about it is, is just wanting to be able to give them the props without coming across like an idiot. Uh, mother told me to bring some flowers, uh, but I was running late. Mm, didn't wanna rush it, bought something safe. Shit, left it on the train in the fucking rain. Strange, I do it all the same just to come again. The pain, I know your girl's being strong for you. Uh, telling me the world ain't long for you. I'm trying to make her laugh any way I can Press her head into my hands But I'm feeling quite responsible uh, So I'ma keep her safe, don't you worry about it And keep that smile get on her face Till the summer clouded And this ain't nothing to replace All the love is shrouded But I can see it on your face You'd be fucking proud And everybody else is too uh, Cause your real eyes is a reflection of you uh, So when you're resting in the setting to soothe Remember every single blessing is true trust And so I'm saying everybody else is too Cause little Harvey's a reflection of you I'm saying everything you say rings true uh, Even Alex a reflection of you When I can see it in the way you move uh, The Michael lies is a reflection of you I'm saying everybody else is too uh, Cause everybody else is too uh, uh. Do you have a dream? I mean, if, if uh, let's say budget wasn't an issue Mad lib I mean, then, then we, really? Mad lib every second To make a beat day. or uh, to, to, to make a whole album I would work with Mad lib I'd go, I'd go away and lock myself in a room and he could How would you me. feel about that knowing that Chris was your Rebel Clef was your go-to guy? Um, Rebel Clef would be happy for me <laughs> <laughs> Chris wouldn't <laughs> um, No, I don't know Yeah, well, uh, that's interesting actually What is your dream collaboration? Oh uh, like, man, I, I mean the dream for me is Steve Wonder? No, it'd be James Blake, man. Mm. Because he's doing something so different, and I yeah. feel like he would bring something different yeah. to my. Uh, yeah. That's how I feel about Madlib. I think that's to why my sound. That's what's exciting about it, man. Someone who does something that you're not expecting. Because you have mm. you heard the Freddie Gibbs and Madlib album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, I might be the yeah, last. true. We've got to play more tunes. If we've got to play more tunes. I might. Yeah, play yeah, it. you play it, man. Because that's um yeah. Because I, I think the thing is, well, what would I play? I will tell you what, I play the remix. Oh, so yeah. I'm that wasn't the, made by Madeline. No, I'm gonna play the remix that was made by Madeline, but it's just got loads of different rappers on it, just because you know, just flexes my um, my rap knowledge a rap bit more. Knowledge, you know, yeah. I want people to know that I'm you know. <laughs> <laughs>
Cali ice bucket challenge on my wrist. Young and black in the U.S. is a challenge to exist. Stole a thousand degrees, I'ma graduate to a brick. I be gradually getting chips. I'ma smoke a scrap in a sack of that poison. If you can push it, I get your points on the back. As he had it loaded and wrapped, and they called him up coming back. Took the loss, but on the next one, I make it back on the tax, nigga. Yeah, I got a selling nigga bags. Elementary mathematics, nigga, can you add? Bitch, you got divided and go re up for at least a half. Smokers get the cockers, we be the man with a geek. Standing by my window with my full clip. Got them told us we been bamboozled and hood wit. Another damn run with some get a badge every week. R.I.P. to Michael Brown and motherfuck the police, bitch. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess I gotta sell a nickel bags, bitch. Uh, uh, yeah. I gotta sell a nickel bags, nigga. Uh, real killer drug dealer. I gotta sell a nickel bags, uh. Real killer drug dealer. I can't sell a nigga this album, I, I listened to it all the way, you know, all the way through front to back for like six months. I, I was saying I didn't like it at first, but um, when when um, when I listened to it again, Rebel Clef was saying to me when we were in Germany, yeah, listen to it, go go for a walk and listen to it again, with a, you know, with a fresh perspective and don't expect anything from it and just let it chat to you for what it is. I, yeah, I couldn't stop, but yeah, well, I downloaded the like the um, I bought yeah, I was the, say. the beat the beat pack. Um, <laughs> The beat pack. Yeah, so there's like a beat pack. It was on YouTube. I didn't actually download it. I just had it on up on YouTube because Madlib uploads all this stuff to YouTube, all of his beats from his tapes. So there was like a like a playlist of the beats from the album. And so I just started writing to them, just, just literally just for fun because I was so kind of into it into the album. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. I want to see what I could do. But I found them so easy to write to, and I was really surprised because I thought they were so left that even I couldn't. Do you know what I mean I couldn't open my mind to, to kind of yeah yeah to, but I, I, it, it came really naturally to me and it then made me think that I don't know spending some time with Madlib would just be the sickest thing yeah because, man and I've met him a couple of times have maybe. you yeah and Shit. I did and but like what well, I met him when I was like 16 my friend was supporting my friend was playing at Lovebox on like in like a in a bar do you know what I mean it was like nothing huge but he was like yo you got the Lovebox on my day we all went down and he had like the guest list for everyone everyone was there. And then we went back, so we were allowed to be in the actual backstage. So we were sat in the backstage, and Maddie was just sat down there, like mid middle of the day, like having a tea or something. Oh, shit, that's mad. That's mad. When you were, oh, yeah, it's yeah. recent. No, no, 16, 16, 16, 17. So I rolled over to him, and I was just like, my friend couldn't even talk, and I was like, yo, thank you for everything. Gave the Shyland bow again. I was like, yo, thank you so much for everything. And he was like, yo, what's up? Where, where are you from? You from London? I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, you guys rap? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I rap, man, I rap. And he was like, wow, you know, let's connect. And they gave me his phone number and I was like, oh my days. And so obviously I took his phone number and I, I didn't, at the time I didn't know how to save an American number. So I only had, there was only like, like, gave me whatever, like the six digits that it is. But I didn't, I didn't know the plus zero one one brackets thing. I didn't know how to do it. So I put it in and tried to text it. And obviously nothing happened. So I was like, yeah, well, there you go. That's that fuck. And I, I couldn't find, I didn't figure out how to do it. And then, you know, by the time the moment was gone. And also I reckon he was just being nice. But um, then like three, four years later, we were at, um, we were playing at Outlook and we were like the first on the bill of his Mad Lib carnival. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had like a stage where he was DJing and shit. And it was like him, Pete Rock, J-Rock. I think you must have been there. We, we obviously, we, I don't think I knew you then. Or we just, we just, we just kind of yeah. started being mates. It was, still, it was still a bit cagey. We'd be like, hey, you want to come hang out with me for the whole day? But um, <laughs> but he was in the backstage and I rolled in the backstage and saw him. And he saw me. And I was like, oh shit, that's Mad Lib. I hadn't seen him for like four years. And he was like, yo kid, how you been? Long time. And I was like, oh shit. Oh, shit. Gave me a hug. And then like then yeah everyone got quite drunk and I but he I think he caught a bit of my set I don't know I really I have no idea um, but then like, he was like to me yeah let's connect man let's do it again and I went but then I, I properly melted because I was like yeah cool but but no so I, did, I ended up saving the plus plus thing and he then cancelled the rest of his touring um, after that day because he had some family thing happen so I just messaged him saying I hope you're okay you know and if you know I didn't talk about music at all I was just like I hope you're okay man you know was was lovely to see you again stay up keep your chin up and whatnot but the same night we were actually sharing a backstage because it was backstage the backstage in the outlook is, is atrocious yeah. it's the shittest thing it's like one bunker where everyone stays but back then there was two and so we were in one and they're like so you got to share with someone and they're just coming at any point we we're like oh, okay cool no worries not thinking who it would be I walked in like halfway through the evening and just pete rock was just sat in there with like three chicks <laughs> smoking a massive blunt and i went in and was just like and he was like yo kid what's up kid what's good kid and I just went, no, no, literally, I was just like, hi, I'm just coming to get some water. And then I didn't go back in for the rest of the night because I was too scared. Too scared. No, but yeah, so that's, there you go. So that's how I, yeah, so that's how I fucked it with, with, with my two favourite producers of all time. Yeah, you got one more? Yeah, let, just let it come back yeah, to you, man. Yeah, yeah, my fingers effect. will speak for me. Oh yeah? Okay, jeez.
That track was called Natural Mystic by Bob Marley. The infamous. It is, uh, in my opinion, the best bass line of all time. It's actually only three notes. Played four times there. Um, and I feel like reggae is the birth of hip hop. Now, there's sort of a story about reggae, like a couple of Jamaican dudes going to New York, rapping over like disco tunes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sort of emceeing over disco yeah, tunes, yeah. which sort of like led to yeah, those yeah. guys doing that. But no, I'm not necessarily talking about lyrically, I'm talking about like instrumentally, the two most important things of reggae is like bass and drums. And um, same in hip hop. I mean, I don't know if you can say the same about punk music. You know, it's not necessarily, even though I don't know anything about punk music. But punk is punk is heavily linked to to hip hop as well. I guess politically. In, in, yeah, in terms of it being rebellion, but also that, that, it, that it was, it's like, you know, I guess, you know, don't think about it sonically, but it's both, it's both kind of like, fuck everything else. I mean, yeah. all the things that's gone on right now, this is like very anti-establishment, which which is what hip hop was. But hip hop's weird, because grime and hip hop from the UK is the only way I can talk about because, you know, talking about dub and, and whatnot and kind of the, the clash, which is like the big Jamaican culture. Yeah. Which is another part of where Grime came from. Which, I mean, I know Grime also comes from. Uh, people say Grime doesn't come from hip hop at all, which mm. I think is gas because they're rapping. They're rapping. Yeah, yeah, so, they're so, rapping so, yeah. so you cannot you cannot say it's not an influence. You can't look at the best rappers in in the UK, be it Grime rappers, and say, do you know anything about all the obvious people? Whoever, no, it's Tupac, Biggie, Eminem, yeah. etc. They're gonna have heard one of them, and they would have been influenced by it at some point, which then feeds back into the into the genre itself. But like punk. Yeah, I guess is you know punk. I don't know what. There's a really really bad. I saw a guy with a really bad T-shirt when we were in Germany, and it was like, um, it was like a hip hop show. And he's like, um, it said something like punk, it's talking about hip hip hop being the new form of punk, saying that punk hasn't died. It's it's just changed its rhythm right. in it. And it's like, okay, all right, I get it. You can pick that up in Camden anyway. But the sentiment <laughs> of it of, of it of it remains. I mean, the idea of it's like, you know, it's just obviously the times are different. What what what's available to people is different, and where it's coming out of is different. see your sound ever changing mm. not really man I mean you know what? are you one of those artists that want to be like that you see yourself having I don't know 10 albums or more like four albums over your career that you're really proud of I reckon the only reason that I would say less of, of, of less albums and, and kind of more of what I'm proud of not not that I would be proud of if I made more yeah because I think it is about how people work I wish I could work like you work do you know what I mean and, and kind of churn it out more and more but I'm not as, in as much control because I play Trumpet, be it very badly, and but you need sort of beats. I'm picking up to be able to yeah, produce, but I can't. You know, I can't. I can't put how I feel down sonically. I can only put it down verbally. Uh, so you know, I can't. I, I don't have the, the the. You know, I get seven beats every day, and of those beats, one of them out of a thousand is one that I'd not a thousand. One, yeah, one, yeah, one yeah. of them in a hundred, but yeah, genuinely, like one in a hundred is one I go. I like that one, and also I could write to that one, and I and the mood I feel right now. Is the same as that one. Uh, it's a, so it's, it's yeah, like a lottery, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah it, it completely is a lottery. You know, and then I, I hear a tune like Barney played me his new album, which is sick, actually, surprisingly. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but he played me his new album, and you know, I heard a beat from this guy, Stuff Daddy, who I'm a massive fan of from Germany. Um, and he was sending me some beats which I was vibing heavy, but uh, there wasn't one I was like, yo, this is the one. Yeah. I hear this tune that Barney sends, play, plays me, and I was like, fuck, that's the beat that I would have wanted to get. Do you know what I mean, but uh, it's like, because producers aren't just sending them to one, one rapper, there's like, 
hundreds of different rappers all get it's, like, it's weird they're just kind of well, they all get sent the same beat well, in, in some cases there's a weird I guess the guy's thing. trying to shop his own yeah, yeah but that's the thing there's a weird like there's a weird taboo with all that because I think I don't think it should be like that but I don't understand because rappers are, are dicks do you know what I mean so you send, send me a beat and if I'm not feeling it I, I, I don't want to be rude and go back and go I'm not feeling this beat and that's how you know I'm eager to work on something straight away so I just leave it and I sit on it but if you send one rapper your, your 10 best beats and then another rapper comes along and says hey I want to use your beat you can't go I'm not going to send it to him because this other one's got him in the case you so then you have to follow up and go yo are you using any of those right now yeah but then if you're thinking oh maybe i want to use one later you kind of go yeah yeah i'm writing some bits i'm writing some bits so just to hold up but then nothing happens do you know what i mean so yeah, you yeah. have to respect the dj and the producer because that's like for that's as a true. rapper more so than anyone else mm. you de- you're dependent on it do you know what i mean if mm. ribble clef wasn't giving me beats i'm not here on a podcast of j-rex the infamous j-rex i'm what gonna saying? give you some beats mate yo please give me some beats but I, I, i'm gonna I, go back to my roots man mm. even though you're talking about not to i mean you're talking about yeah. writing some yeah, yeah, different yeah. music with yeah. like live stuff but I'd love to like I don't know I was making a beat on the plane the other day yeah. just having so much fun Six. knowing this is yeah. the history yeah, this yeah, is yeah, where yeah, I yeah. started yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean lay the drums play the chords Six. maybe sample some like high pitch vocals yeah, yeah, over the top but that's what I was saying because it was interesting there's been a lot of talk about me and Tom making the joint tape and I was thinking about it but I was the other thing I was thinking about was just you know really getting people in a room at different different times to, to you know to kind of do true true collaboration because I was saying I would love to be in a room with with Tom and Chris, I'd love to be in a room with you and Chris, yeah, yeah, or with you and Alpha. That yeah, mean, would be this. That that's that that for me, that's like the dream for me. If we if I could spend a week with you and Alpha, mm. um, in like just in a live room, some and somewhere kind of off, off the beaten track a little yeah, bit, yeah. So a bit further out, and just like kind of go there. It's got like a live room, and it's also got a place everyone can stay. So everyone's just in. That's the, the same. dream, man. I've always had that dream of like doing that whole that writing yeah, week yeah, that yeah, all yeah. artists yeah. dream yeah. of. But um, but didn't, also yeah. Alpha, yeah, he was a massive. Because I was riding cloak back yeah. in Australia. Okay, okay. Oh, I really? Came, pretty much. Oh, of course, of course. All the yeah, cores. Yeah, and then I came to London. Mm-hmm. I was like, Alpha was this guy that knew what I meant in my head. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I wanted to go dark here, but I don't. Because he plays piano yeah, better yeah, than yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. And he took it there, but he's he's a beast, man. He's yeah. a, he's been an influence and on myself. One of the best bitters that I've ever met as well. Because he doesn't like you. Don't think that he raps when you meet him, but he's so cold. He's an amazing rapper. Yeah. But it was the biggest compliment I ever got from anyone was when he said he liked the way I rapped or he was like a fan of 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 the, of the shit I was writing because of rapper to rapper like when I there's loads of rappers I'm a fan of but from the UK I think Alpha might be the new like the new best because he does everything he, he ticks every single box that needs to be ticked I mean like the best UK rapper of all time is Jest shortly followed by Getz that, that's how I feel but then Alpha is just this because Alpha makes jazz jazz music plays piano also grew up on grime knows everything about there is to know about hip hop and can put all those three things together yeah. he spits on one of his own jazz tunes yeah 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 what the fuck man and it's I saw him performing in um, Ghent he, goes, he so supported yeah. me in Ghent the Ghent's other day Ghent's sick would hey. you see Willem out there? no Willem the guy does all eyes on hip hop no oh I thought Barney said he was there never mind, never mind. Um, but Alpha was like playing keys in this ballad mm-hmm. and then just started rapping and the crowd was like what? because everyone yeah. was taking like solos and he just started rapping playing piano I've never seen so yeah. he, well, he was rapping live? Rapping live. Yeah, because I didn't think he was going to do that because I've been telling him to do that, man. Because yeah, because yeah, Alpha's quite a reserved guy. Yeah. But so he's, I'm yeah, he's, seeing him like rip the crowd to shreds. Yeah, he's a true genius. But it's been it. It's been a big deal for me to actually. I don't know because obviously I got introduced by everyone else through, through Tom, and you know, was was fans of everyone before I started meeting them. But I'm I'm happy to be back properly and to be able to get some time because, like the stuff. I don't know. Obviously, you know, I make I write rhymes. It's cool. But I've always felt like there's so much more I wish I could do, and you can do it. Alpha can do it. I mean, Tom can do it, and it's 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 a, like a true joy whenever I've been around you lot, especially in the studio setting, but just at shows or whatnot. Because that is it. Like it feels like it unlocks the next. Mm. leveling stuff that I feel like I can do it gives me fresh ideas because you listen to a beat it's cool but there's no one else there like the life of a rapper it's quite a lonely life yeah, you get a beat you sit and, you, and I can't write around people I mean you can't can, write lyrics around people no not really I can write I can write if my missus is asleep in bed I can write but that's about it I can't write and be like surrounded by people I can write in the studio with a producer if I have to but I like to be on my own really yeah yeah or for it to be tranquil 
But like when it comes, but then it's a completely different thing if you're in a room with people and there's, you know, you're saying, yo, for the course we could do this and then, oh, thinking about maybe doing this and actually for the verse, we, halfway through, we split this in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then because that evolution is happening there, I don't want to be writing in, the, in in a separate room. I want to be writing in the room so I can be moving with the ebb and flow of what's happening. Yeah, it's interesting. And I think that's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's something kind of, you're yeah. excited about. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was so excited by next time because when I was making this first time, I just didn't have the mates like that or the, con- or the connections like that to do mm. it properly or the, 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 the finance. I still don't have much money, but like I, I didn't have any money yeah, to, no, to be able to go. Yo, let's get a studio for a week, you know. Now I can go. Hey, let's get a studio for a week, you know. Yeah, yeah. Jordan Rakai, new album. Talk to me about it. Plug it because it's not like that. But obviously, it's, uh, it's uh, it came out. So my album came out Ooh. September twenty second. Um, album sophomore album. I feel like an American saying that. Yeah. Um, it's because he's. But it's because I'm influenced by American yeah, music. Yeah. Um, the album. I'm really proud of it, man. It's uh, in the past. Um, I used to I like. It's sort of how you said about Chris rapping over his own beats. Yeah. I was a beat maker first. Mm-hmm. I would sing anything that would fit the beat do you know yeah, what I mean yeah, I, was, yeah. I was fitting my vocal and using it as an instrument yeah, yeah. but um, on this album I feel like it's less um, I don't know less party music less music you can show your mates it's more like yeah. music for a, a lonely commute yeah. Yeah, around yeah, London yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's my, my album Warflower is about me going through sort of you mentioned it like uh, social anxiety dealing with moving to London yeah, 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 what yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. I'm really proud of it just finished a tour of Europe it's been amazing heading to Australia with Loyal, Big not, not together, but we're there at the same time. Yeah, shout out to Australia. Um, but uh, As a man, your album's been out for nearly a year now. Yeah, we've been touring. We, we toured this album for nine months. Played a hundred shows in three hundred days. It's one show every three days. You can't do math. Um, quick math. Fuck yeah, that's, <laughs> that's quick math. But yeah, man. No, it's, yeah, it's, I'm ready to ready to chill for a bit. I think before we go to Australia. Yeah, well, it's same. been good but yeah actually if you're listening you came to a show thank you very much for coming to a show because it's been good especially sorry if you came to one of the shows at the very end of the tour because I was very tired <laughs> I'm sorry if I coughed between any of the songs or any of the verses I've, uh, I've seemed to have lost my voice as well yeah, yeah. even though you've done more shows and I'm sorry about the beard as well that's the main thing because I, I can't grow a beard but I'm sorry about the little shit that I was getting on because I lost my, my one blade and I couldn't I couldn't trim it up so yeah if you saw me and I was looking like the yeti that I was looking like <laughs> apologies um Mate, thank you, Ben Coyolana, Loyal Kana, for um, coming in and chatting with us, chatting with me. Jordan Rakai is my man. And thank you, Jordan Rakai, for hosting this event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out. Oh, shout out to the ADHD Cooking School as well. Shout oh, out. yes. Donate. Come be part of it. Laters. It was the bad old days Where the warriors came out to play where the visitors outstayed their welcome Aspirations Filled with fear and doubt Who's turned to make the move? Who's left it all to you? I'm not ideal in situations of confrontation I don't prefer to raise my voice I'm still trapped by the cages of my lips And you hold the key So allow me to be free It's been 24 years 24
Thanks to Jordan Rakai and Lol Karna. Now we turn our attention to some of the new releases from the Ninja Tune family of labels, starting with Nabiya Iqbal and Zone 1 to 6000 from her album Weighing of the Heart. We wander through each other's lives just like the rivers, constant flow and signs of life in all our eyes keep this city on the go. Nabiya Iqbal and Zone 1 to 6000 from a new album on Ninja Tune. Next, it's Mercury Award winners Young Fathers with their new single, Lord. Young Fathers with Lord ahead of their new album. Up next, it's Visionist with your approval from his new album, Value. Visionist with your approval out on Big Dada. Now it's the bug featuring Flodan and a track called Bad. I 
As I look at you, them you say, tell me that me bad. Primary school, the teachers tell me that me bad. Secondary school, you know, them tell me that me bad. Me never listen, cause you know, so that me bad. When me day around, me mother tell me find a job. Pick up microphone, now with the talents where me have. I for show respect for super cat and ninja man. Shabba ranks, good to bunt and bunt to kill a beanie man. Them set the thing, so you have to understand. When we kill a sound boy in a competition Me no ram, we no skin when microphone in a me anna. Get up, stand up and rock to the original then That was The Bug with Bad on Ninja Tune And finally it's Romare with All Night from the Live Sessions 1 EP on Ninja Tune Romare with his track All Night. And that's it for the Ninja Tune podcast. Our thanks to Jordan Rakai and Lol Karna, plus Jack Smith for co producing. If you enjoyed it, please rate the podcast, and we'll be back next year on a monthly basis. Happy Christmas. <laughs>